democratically voted no to independence and that they wanted to remain in the UK. Do we just ignore election results until they give us the result we want? Do you think, do you think a general election hastens a second independence vote in Scotland? I, I think that we could see the SNP losing some seats and that will prove that it's not wanted. Okay. I think we'll have to wait and see what happens. But if you, if you drop back from your 56 out of 59 seats, which was what happened in May 2015, if you drop back than that, people will suggest, your opponents will suggest, look, evidence shows that support for independence or a second vote is waning. I think, with respect, um, to the lady uh, and, and uh, her uh, her point is is misguided because we actually stood in 2016 in the Scottish elections on a manifesto commitment that said if Scotland if, if there is a material change in circumstances and Scotland is taken out of the European Union against its will which it now is being then there is grounds for a second referendum the Scottish Parliament has now voted by a majority to hold a second referendum so you know how many mandates do we need uh, we stood on a manifesto commitment in the general election in 2015 to come to Westminster and stand up for the people of Scotland and stand up against the Tory okay. government. And that's what we've done. And that is the manifesto commitment that we will continue to pursue. This general election will be about Scotland's voice at Westminster and standing up against the Tories, which Scotland has not voted yeah. for. But, but, okay. Let's just be quite clear about this whole question about mandates here. Hannah did stand on, or her colleagues stood on a platform that said that a, there would be a, a referendum if there was a material change in circumstances. They lost their majority in the Scottish Parliament. The Greens who voted voted that in the uh, sorry the greens who, who voted for that in the scottish parliament said that they would only support a second referendum if there was a petition with a million signatures on it suddenly that's all forgotten about Victoria, let's from talk the, about the, let's the talk about manifesto yeah. commitments no tuition fees as close to the single market as we could possibly get and a 50 pence top rate of tax and all ditched no in their manifestos right okay labor have never broken promises not in their manifestos so what about OK, you well, I'm just, my brain is going backwards Well, now. you might have to go backwards, but the, yeah, problem, yeah, yes. the, point we're, the point that we're making here is that people always go back to the manifesto when it suits. Democracy only works when it suits the answer you want. The Scottish people voted no on an 85% turnout, 55 to 45, yeah, only changed, two so years ago. And people have voted uh, in this country uh, in 2015 for, the, for okay. the government that we've got at the moment. It's opportunism from the First Minister and the Prime Minister. It's damaging the country. It's damaging my constituents' livelihoods, and I'll be fighting to make sure those are protected. All right, and Alistair Carmichael is right. Labour did introduce tuition fees when it promised not to. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank no. you for your time this morning. <laughs> uh, welcome to the programme. If you're just tuning in, we're live from Westminster. As you can see, we're discussing the fact that this country is having a general election in a few weeks' time. Was Theresa May right to call the election now? Which parties will gain and which will lose out? to uh, uh, the situation of some workers who might have uh, some job insecurity uh, and potentially unscrupulous bosses. Well, I lost my leadership.